Hola, mi compadres. Uh, I don't know Spanish. That's offensive, right? Anyway, today we're going to do a little quickie on uh, how to explain evolution to a creationist. Um, as some of you might know, I have a very close friend who is not just a creationist. Well, I mean, not just a Christian, but a, a fundy. Um, and she's pretty benign. Uh, she's one of the people who is fully capable of believing some impossible things before breakfast without ever, um, what's the word I'm looking for, pushing on anybody or really having it affect her social life outside of church, which is cool and I respect that. But uh, today was one of the few times where I basically started trying to poke at her a little bit because today's Sunday and she literally spends, I think, about 10 hours at church on Sunday. It's pretty intense. But um, I ended up uh, mentioning how a lot of uh, creationist ministers who uh, advocate against evolution are liars or don't know what they're talking about. And I ended up bringing up Ray Comfort to her. And the way I explained why uh, we call him the Banana Man is thusly. God did, I'm sure as a lot of you know, or if not all of you should know, God did not make the banana as you see it in the grocery store. God also did not make corn as you see it in the grocery store. Technically, God did not make corn and bananas, period. We did. And the way we did is through a method called what they would think of as breeding, which they believe in the whole microevolution thing, but that's far from the case. What this is is called artificial selection. What artificial selection is is the way flowers in your nursery have been made, the way the corn in your grocery store has been made, the way most commercially available plants have been made and it's through breeding them um, to get desired traits out of their offspring. Uh, to have the corn have thicker kernels, to have the banana have no seeds, seedless watermelons for instance, were created through na uh, artificial selection. The major component of evolution the major, major, major for the way things change over the time and the way a small kind of cow-like hyena creature became whales and how a not-too-dissimilar creature became dolphins. There's a reason why whales and dolphins are mammals and they breathe air, even though they swim around in the ocean. is because they evolved from semi-aquatic land life to fully aquatic life over generations because the animals that swam more and could do things like hear underwater, and they, the way they developed ears that are designed to hear underwater, not hear in air, and so forth, were the animals that were better adapted to their environment and bred more. Now what that is, is called natural selection. And what Darwin's On the Origin of Species about isn't about evolution. He didn't fully formulate that theory. What Darwin's major breakthrough was was the discovery of natural selection. And there is only one difference between artificial selection and natural selection. Artificial selection is when an intelligent entity forces the breeding of two animals or whatever, or you know, animals, plants, whatever, so that their offspring has the desired traits. So you would, if you want bigger cows, you only let your biggest cows have sex with each other. If you want blue flowers, you only let the blue flowers have sex with each other. That's artificial selection. The way natural selection is, is whichever animal survives its environment the best and is best adapted to live and thus reproduce is the animal that most likely, on average, because it's a probability thing, the animal that most likely has sex the most and has the most offspring is the animal that is most able to do that. And the animal that is most able to do that is the animal that doesn't die of sickness, the animal that doesn't get eaten and so forth before it reproduces. With plants, the plant that best spreads its seeds or the plant that is best attracts pollen carriers and such is the plant that reproduces. And you're going to see offspring have these successful traits. 
That doesn't mean the biggest, that doesn't mean the strongest, that doesn't mean the fastest. It just means the animal that is best able to survive in its environment. And if we didn't have technology, and if we didn't have the luxury of civilization and technology in order to be able to mate with who we want, the only humans walking around would be bare fucking grills, okay? We have the luxury to artificially select not just ourselves, but the animals we can control and the plants we can control. It's all evolution. All of it. And there's actually, I'm really surprised biologists and geneticists don't say this because it really is the truth. It's not, it, there really actually isn't any such thing as macroevolution. It's all microevolution, and the only way you get dramatic changes, the reason why bears and dogs can't breed together, the reason why house cats and lions can't breed together, the reason why um, a koala and a kangaroo can't bang each other, even though they likely have common ancestors, the reason why you and I can't mate with chimpanzees, even though we are 98% the same animal as a ch chimpanzee genetically, is because speciation, which is probably a better top, a topic best served for a different video. This one's getting a little bit long. But the reason why Banana Man got made fun of is because a banana evolved. He's holding a man-evolved plant in his hand and saying, look how awesome this is. God made this. The only God who made it is a guy who looked like this, and he doesn't live in the sky. See you next time.